James Brains of Bangor Life here with another episode of The Nasties. And this is a difficult one to approach. Uh, and it's <laughs> going to be very difficult to talk through. Mm. Because it's so much of it is nonsense. It's so much of its plot is open to interpretation. Mm. So much of it is not explained. So much of it is unsatisfying. Mm. And I should add, so much of it is downright boring. Yeah. This is The Witch Who Came From The Sea, 1976 movie. This is one of the nasties that was not prosecuted. It was part of the list, mm -hmm. uh, the 33 titles that were part of the subgroup, but was not prosecuted. However, its story is a bit interesting. Um, it was banned in Britain for scenes of extreme sexual violence. Um, however, there's no actual evidence, apparently, that there was ever given an earlier theatrical release. Mm. Uh, the BBFC has no record of its certification from 1976 or afterwards. Mm. And there are no indications that the film was banned elsewhere. However, in 1983, we, the UK, compiled a list of 72 video releases, obviously, that were not brought before the BBFC for certification and declared them prosecutable for obscenity, which is the nasty list. Mm. Uh, the list of video nasties included The Witch Who Came From The Sea, but it was in the subgroup of 33 titles that were unsuccessfully prosecuted, as we said, and then dropped from the DPB list. Uh, eventually, it was released uncut in 2006, and that is what it is now. It is uncut. And watching it, mm. I think it might be up there as the tamest one we've done so far. Yeah. Um, yeah. In regards to violence, yeah. actually, let's say that. Yeah, yeah. In the regards violence, to yeah. violence and sexual content, yeah. uh, visual content, I mean, in the sense of what you can see, mm. it's probably the tamest one we've done so far. Yeah. There are t there's uh, a couple of topless shots, same woman each time, which is Millie Perkins, mm. who plays Molly. Um, she's topless a fair bit. Yeah. Uh, there's still a couple of bits when there's like a party scene where there's a few people. In true. Topless. Well done. Yeah. But yeah. Well spotted. Nothing like insanely <laughs> over the top. No, in fact, there's uh, two things that I think might have been where it's kind of got itself in trouble. One is what in, is is a sexually violent uh, uh, murder, mm. uh, but that's a lot that's implied, and the blood that comes from that is it's tame. Yeah. It's it's very poor. Yeah. It's a very poor effect. I think from that, it's probably the part afterwards she's rubbing herself, her body in a sexually sexual yeah. fashion. With the blood. I'm guessing some of the themes as well would kind of put it into that category. I think the child, it's there's a heavy child abuse theme running yeah. through this. And unlike uh, Implied, this is happy enough to go, no, this is child abuse, including having uh, the abuser s s having sex with the child. Yeah. Um, Obviously, you know. very well cuts for it, so it's a clearly sort of... But he's on top. Yeah. He's on top of her and he's thrusting. Yeah. There, there you go. Yeah. And it's, you know, that that's, uh, that's quite a hefty sort of thing um, I think they're the t probably the two parts that I might point out and go with those mm. they're still tame still tame as fuck in my yeah. opinion I feel I feel like the actual just before we even started the, from the witch that came from the sea is completely the wrong title a bit misleading do, do you, you think? think I think it is I think it's quite insulting I, I a witch. I don't think I. Th I think it's um, taking it too put, literal. No, I think it's. I think it's put on there to make it seem like it's supernatural. Oh, you well, reckon? It's really, it's mental health issues and child abuse, which I think is a little bit cheap. But obviously, it's heavily themed around the sea. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, you yeah, maybe, the monster that came from the sea because it could be the dad. But the dad was the monster. You that's called it that. Yeah, that's a fair point. Mm. Yeah, yeah, the witch came from the sea. Certainly, she yeah, wasn't a witch. She was just she had mental health problems. Clearly, yeah. There's, it, it, I think it's tight. I think the title was has been taken from one particular scene in the movie uh, when they're talking about Venus emerging from the sea. Yeah, who was a witch effectively. Yeah. I think that's where that's come from. And yeah. he thought, oh, that'll work as a snazzy title. It is a snazzy title. But you're right, it's not reflective of what really the movie is about. And the movie's a very serious toned, very serious toned combination of mental health issues, child abuse mm. and murder. Yeah. Yeah. This is difficult to talk through the plot because it is all over the place. It is all over the place. Uh, sometimes it's not clear what was a dream, what wasn't, what was a fantasy, what wasn't. Um, a lot of the time you're in, in a very lengthy fant fantasy, seemingly fantasy slash daydream. Mm. And then it turns out that wasn't anyway. Yeah. Uh, the same dialogue, just like nonsense. Yeah. Just dialogue. Nonsense. It has no rhyme or reason or she just talked like, seemed like she just talks for the sake of it rather than anyone prompting. Yeah. It, it seemed like they were so scared of either cutting a particular scene 
or having it be a bit quieter. So they were like, look, we'll fill every scene with dialogue. Mm. There will never be a moment where someone is not saying something, even if that something is utterly, utterly um you're in, you're in a monologue yeah yeah, yeah. You're, in, you're in a monologue sometimes you don't say everything that's on your mind we don't need that as well it, like the writers were like okay we want this 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 is going to have depth this is going to have mm. depth and these words are going to have depth yeah. and it's like but it doesn't it doesn't it sounds like you're reciting shit from not quite like shakespeare and mm. so on but like writing reciting shit from a play yeah and it's not made any better by what is a pretty haphazard cast mm. i think some get better as the movie goes on yeah. Like the, let's talk about Molly Perkins, who is the star of this film. Mm. She's in, in almost every fucking scene. Yeah. Like, we should point out that her late husband was the one who wrote this movie, and he wrote it for her, with her her in mind. Oh really? Oh. As the star. Um. So he made sure she was in it. Yeah. And she's in it from the opening credits to the last scene. Yeah. And I don't. In fact, think about it. Is there actually a scene where she's not, in it? Maybe two, three seconds. Like the, more like the police stuff and interviewing people when she's not there. That's true. But I would say, it. oh yeah, I would then go, right, here's a movie that's 100%. She's in 90 plus yeah. percent of this movie, which is too fucking much yeah. uh, for an actress who is terrible. Like at first, when she starts talking, oh, oh. I was just like, you are joking me. She gets better as the movie goes on. Yeah. But the real problem is it just won't cut. Mm. It won't cut. The, the final 15 minutes... Could have been two minutes long. Yeah. But it's 15 minutes. And she does not shut up. Yeah. Just, uh, just an absolute waffle. And like, so at lines like the, at the beginning, she's telling her sister that, oh, I start at work at seven, so I will be leaving now. And it's just, why are you talking like that? They're very, they're very mm. heavy on saying what's about to happen mm. and dropping you the big in-your-face clue by going, this is being said because it's important later yeah. on. So, um, you know, you get that very early on in the, almost the first opening lines where she where she is forced to make it clear that she's not the mother to the two children she is. Mm. And it's so hammy and mm. so wooden and so like the instantly I was like, why would you say that? Yeah. You wouldn't say that. We could have just worked that ourselves as the movie yeah. went on. Your next scene is bringing them to their actual mother. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So what if we get confused at the start and think that she's the mother? Yeah. It doesn't matter. Two minutes later, it's cleared up. You're like, oh, okay, she's not the mum. Yeah. The same with what you just said. That is said so that we know what time it is. So then when she's three hours late later on, yeah. we can then add, yeah. like, draw some lines that really, really didn't need to be done. Because no, the, cause the, when she got to work late, the barman does say as well, oh, you're three hours late. There you go. That's, that's it. That's, that's it. all we it's needed old, to know. Yeah, it is some clunky... Oh, we're leaving now. <laughs> Absolutely. So we're going to give it a shot. I'm going to use a combination of what I just watched and um, the plot from Wikipedia to try and piece this nonsense together. I had to stop several times and go, right, may, like pause the movie and, and go, right, maybe this is what they're trying to do. <laughs> the problem is, is everything I, I thought I had it sussed out. Mm -mm. But by the end, it doesn't clear up or answer enough questions no. I have to get all those threads together. I have the threads. They're loosely tied together, yeah. but I've got nothing from that film to tighten them by the yeah. end. And that's infuriating. So Molly, as uh, by, played by Perkins, Millie Perkins, she's uh, a young woman. She lives in Southern California. She's an alcoholic, basically. That is heavy throughout the movie. Yeah. And she drinks, drinks heavy. The people she around do not help matters. Yeah. Do not help matters. <laughs> Was it a tall, give me a tall vodka. I was expecting like, you know, like a... A bigger measure. No, it's a full glass of vodka. <laughs> a tall vodka literally means a glass of vodka. Um, yeah, better. I mind if you ever ordered that at a bar. Yeah. Um, so Molly, Molly's obsessed with TV, basically. Um, and she's kind of, from what I gathered, she basically puts the people on TV on pedestals. Mm. Sees them as heroes, as better than us. Um, and almost at Razor Sunshine, who can do no wrong. Yeah. This is heavily implied when she talks to her two nephews, who have the... Oh. Oh, also, you know, I know they're child actors and they don't have much in this, but they are arguably the worst actors yeah, in this yeah, movie. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's a long stretch. <laughs> and the names are Tad, which, fair enough, yeah. bit of an American, American. name. Yep. Tripoli. Tripoli. Who names the place, child isn't Tripoli? Isn't it's it in place, Italy? Yeah, I think it's a place in Italy. Wasn't it? I don't know if it's related to the sea, I'm not sure if it was a battle at sea, Tripoli. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. Maybe that was to do a reference to the sea again. I don't know. But, maybe, maybe, yeah. I'm not sure. But basically, um, early on it's established that her father, who was a sea captain, uh, was not a very nice man. She argues with her sister, Kathy, mm. 
Mm. Um, and they're very chalk and cheese, the two. Kathy's like a seamstress, the mother of Trad and Tripoli, um, and very on edge a lot of the time. Uh, but she clearly loves her sister, Molly. Yeah. Molly seems to have this constant feeling, like look of disgust or annoyance towards her sister. Yeah. Um, but this is because Kathy is more aware of the past than Molly is. Mm. Uh, so basically... Um, she was molested, yeah. sexually abused by her father as a mm. child, something that she's obviously repressing heavily because she talks about her father in hero fashion yeah. and how he was lost at sea, particularly to her nephews. And when Kathy tries to remind her about the abuse, mm. she accuses Kathy of lying and stuff like that. It's very confusing in the end. Is the child who's supposed to play the young Molly looks as a child more likely to be Kathy? So I admittedly, I thought, oh no, maybe this is wrong. Mm. Maybe actually it's Kathy who is the one abused. Uh, her father dies while abusing her. Mm. And um, Molly blames her. She loved her father, a yeah. hero worshipper and all that. That would have been perfectly fine. That's not the case. No. It's not answered by the end. And because of the story, it's got to be Molly. Yeah. But the child looks more like she'd have grown up to be Kathy than she would Molly. Yeah, if that, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. That kind of picks on. It looks slightly more like Molly. Yeah. I think now we're talking about it, something's just come off my head. Mm -hmm. I feel that Molly might be glossing over herself a bit in a sea captain. Right. Because there's, there's hints of things like they make a ship in a bottle, like a big model of a boat yep. together. There's a picture of the boat behind them yeah. after like, they've had sex. She refers to them being lost at sea so many times, which obviously when they were having sex, yep. when he was molesting her, sorry, sex wrong one, when he was molesting her, they lost lost at sea and her dad died at sea. So I think I think she made up the whole thing that he's a sea captain. I suppose it gives him a bit more hero worship so and stuff I think like that. Was, like, yeah. Because Kathy bl bluntly says that he's buried in a cemetery. She can mm. show her the gravestone and stuff like that. Yeah. So like, and w this is actually true. This makes sense actually. Be this, no, you're right. Mm. I think you are right. See, this is how confused the plot is. Mm. Because we'll jump to the end here. Um, mm. the, he, the father dies uh, while abusing mm. the daughter. He has a heart attack while on her, on top of her, yeah. doing his business. Mm. So, yeah, mm. so then he would be buried. It's not like... Yeah, there's a picture, he wasn't, picture of a boat behind him. He's not lost at sea. No. He's not lost at sea. He died of a heart attack, yeah. and you know, and so on. Um, so let me get the first of one of the very... Well, no, this is the only dream daydream sequence. The rest is all pretty clear it's real. Yeah. But this turns out to be real anyway. We get a really, really long daydream sequence where Molly basically is in a hotel room with two football players... Mm. Um, oh, we need to go back up. So we're going to back up a bit yeah. just for the laugh. On the beach is where we get our first clue that Molly is interested in sculpting and in, and good looking men. Yeah. And she watches a load of beef cakes work out. Yep. And the camera focuses on their <laughs> junk. And it is hilarious. Yeah. They're, the things they stuff down their pants to give oh, them God. engorged penises make it look like these oh, guys yes. need to go to the doctor. Yeah, it's all here. Like, it's not. One guy looks like he's got. <laughs> Um, literally a baby's fucking arm. Yeah. Down, like, you know that joke about a baby's arm <laughs> holding an apple. It looks like that, yeah. but shorter and fatter. I mean, the girth on this thing is like that. <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ, yeah. it's hilarious. But anyway, she ends up in the hotel room with two famous football players. This goes on for fucking mm. ages. This is a good ten minutes at least, mm. and all that happens is. She, they, 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 they talk sexy. They get stoned. Uh, one of them falls asleep. She ties them up, mm. and then proceeds to cut the dick off one, one of the others. You yeah. do, you see nothing except blood splattering on her leg. Yep. Um, but all throughout this, the dialogue is not just ho horrid, near unlistenable. Yeah. Because it's implying it's a dream sequence, so it's got this airy, wavery like sound. An echoey sound. Yeah. yeah. But it makes it near impossible because the men also, particularly are talking as if they're stoned. So it's that combination of mumbling mm. and this echoey yeah. thing. And honestly, you're straining to hear what they're saying. And then you're straining and you realise nothing of worth is being no. shared here. Nothing. She's topless throughout this. So, you know, if you want your boob fixed, go nuts, it's yeah. here. Uh, and that's, that's that. Uh, she then goes, obviously, to the bar to start a shift. That's where we find out she was three hours late, even yeah. though she left on time and so on. And it's pretty clear... That um, that this wasn't so much a daydream as something that actually happened. happened yeah. um, the problem is, is the way the film tries to sell itself, and I guess it's stupid for doing this. This sequence happens where she first has a drink at home, mm. and then it ends with her still having that same drink. Hence the daydream thing. Yeah. So 
but the event the, yeah. the event happened after that when she leaves so the, it's the film purposely trying to throw us off yeah. but later on it, it's like they decided nah that doesn't work just let's do normal yeah. stuff um, yeah so uh, it's at the bar we meet a, uh, a group of, we meet, meet other characters basically mm. we meet Long John who's her boss he's the owner of the bar played by Lonnie Chapman arguably the best thing in the movie definitely uh, for acting wise I'd mm. say as well he, he actually is one who can sell a lot with his facial expressions mm. I jokingly said to you during it, his brow is constantly getting more and more furrowed yeah. as he gets more and more worried. Concerned. And then there's a couple of others there as well. We constantly hear about I, I, one character. There's constantly they're sharing stories about one one uh, one worker who's not there. I thought we were going to get sort of a payoff involving her. Yeah, no. Nope, but nothing ever comes no. of that. Um, but these are probably the better scenes in the bar. There's a bit more banter, a bit more back and yeah. forth uh, that's a little bit more enjoyable. Yeah. You know, both outraged about little John using his hands to put ice in glass. Uh, yeah. Oh. You know, particularly as the time of recording, as the time of recording for this. So, uh, you know, it's it's COVID-19, mm. isolation and all that. And seeing this guy go, no, oh, with ice. Yeah. It's like, no, no, please stop. <laughs> um, but basically, yeah. He, so, yeah. Um, her and little John are sleeping together. Yeah. It's not... There's not said at any point that they're a couple, but they care about each other. He loves her. She says she loves him, mm. but they're not together exclusively. No, it's just as 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 and when. That's yeah. Together. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's things that we then it's almost like it's split in a sequence, isn't it? A sequence here, conversation yeah. bit. Sequence here. As the next sort of major sequence uh, involves another TV star for her, number one she admires on TV called Billy Bat, who is played by Rick Jason. I don't know the name. Yeah. Um, a bit of a silver fox, good looking mm. man and all that. And it's here we kind of get the movie's implied title. Is he's the one that tells her the story of Venus, the birth of Venus yeah. on the wall. Um, but he's banging to her. He wants to sleep with her. He doesn't even hide it. She asks, she asks him directly. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. She's like, uh, what do you want to, you want to take me to bed? He's like, hey, bed, floor, bathtub. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Um, but in there, she shows her kind of true colours and yeah. becomes a bit of a psychopath breaks his wrist yeah. attacks him it's so annoying right like I hate characters I hate characters like this and it's unfortunately a part of horror particularly the nasties where the men are written as such horn dogs that they'll ignore things that are real like flashing warning yeah. signs of don't do this because this will go yeah. bad yeah. just because they're so fucking horny mm. and like he gets his lip bitten by her and she's talking like a bit of a crazy thing mm. and his response is to start doing his flies yeah. it's like oh come on man um, he gets off lucky, to be fair. Mm. He gets off all right. Um, what's to call it? Um, uh, he, he, in fact, he comes out worse in the eyes of his guests because he, 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 he knocks her down. Yeah. And the guests all come running. I think it's him. Um, and thinks he, like, you know, he just knocked her about kind of thing. Um, and Molly, apparently, you know, she, she has got a good way of acting innocent, I yeah. suppose. Oh, I thought it was my fault. It was my fault. Uh, then we get like one of many bad ma like instant cuts that just make it so much more confusing. We go from that to Molly getting a tattoo by uh, Jack Dracula, mm -hmm. uh, Stan Ross, who looks fucking crazy. Yeah. Um, and he gives her a tattoo of like a mermaid on her abdomen, a big mermaid, yeah. where you know from the tail down by the edge of her uh, bikini line, all yeah. the way up to the middle of her breasts. Um, pretty extreme tattoo, not 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 a, not a great tattoo. One, you know, I, I'm not going to uh, uh, Jack Drag Dracula no. um, for a tattoo anytime he had soon. He gloves on as well, just for like <laughs> basically for safety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, what's and um, yeah, that's kind of just another scene, and that goes on again for ages. Mm. And she does not shut up, uh, you know. And to be fair, give him credit as an actor, like his character. He doesn't like act. He's just like, yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. tell you, yeah, sure. Yeah, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but she then, after that, then gets in contact with a man called Alexander McPeak, played by Stafford Morgan. She meet, met him mm -hmm. at the end of the party with um, Billy Bat. Mm -hmm. uh, he's quite a good looking um, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's fascinated by him because guess what? He appeared in commercials yeah we see the same commercial about five times per hour it's a shaving commercial yeah. really cheesy but the kind of thing you would see on tv yeah. topless man yeah shaving she yeah. and the woman's like oh god i mean fuck me we still have those kind of ads nowadays yeah. do you, you want the closest shave ever yeah. and it's the man in front of me going mm, and the woman comes along and goes oh you know it's so it's not that yeah. weird but um 
Yeah, she's in. She's into uh, McPeak, as he's mm. referred to pretty much in the movie. Yeah, no one really uses his first name. They just call him McPeak. Yeah. Um, but he already has a girlfriend, uh, an attractive girlfriend, and him, his girlfriend, mm. uh, Molly and Long John all have a drink together, and Molly does her usual weirdness. Takes drugs as well. Like again, mm. I think there's quite a lot of drug taking by her, but it's not always seen. I think you have to kind of just, as a, as a watch as a viewer just assume she's taking drugs sometimes when she goes on for these long rants yep because it's all sort of peppered with drug use and she take anything that's offered to yeah, her yeah any pill any pill she'll it's take to her, so, yeah um, yeah I think she's on pill, pills for this scene as well when she goes back yeah she does she yeah. takes them yeah. yeah not only that as well she, she constantly complains of a headache and these often come when she's forced to face an uncomfortable truth mm. either about the people she admires on TV mm. the men or her father yeah. um, and she'll often be you know be like Ugh. so I guess that does work yeah um, she ends up obviously her McPeak uh, end up banging away uh, the cuts again terrible I thought it, uh, a, a couple of weeks had passed no. turned out a couple of hours because in a couple of hours not only did uh, McPeak dump his girlfriend yep. but he hooked up with uh, Molly yep. and gave her a phone number she stayed the night and when he got the tattoo it's a lot of shit in a very short mm-hmm. amount of time yeah. Uh, they get a hilarious scene when McPeak's uh, ex-girlfriend, Clarissa, who's played by Roberta Collins, uh, so angry at rejection, comes in with a gun and fires at his Ferrari, always expensive car. Oh, shoots his tyres out. Uh, she, 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 she can't aim for shit, but somehow <laughs> shoots his tyre out um, and squeals like a fucking pig, man. Which, yeah. yeah um, hilar- it's quite funny more than anything else. Um, that's when McPeak... Uh, kind of stops her, yeah. And uh, the police get involved. They question McPeak about mm. uh, Clarissa, and uh, start questioning about Molly. Now the police have been on and off popping up throughout the movie at this stage, trying to close the net around who this person might be. Yeah. But they're not good. No, they're not good police. They have a habit of just coming in and standing there and going, "Who's this jeans belong to? Or did you see something?" And then disappearing yeah. again for another fifteen minutes. Mm. Uh, the best example I can, they can, I can get is they 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 go to Kathy, mm. if you remember, uh, Molly's sister, um, because she's a seamstress and they figure they can link the clothing to mm. that. Yeah. And Kathy doesn't just act suspiciously. <laughs> Jesus Christ, she acts like she clearly knows something and the police leave her alone each time. Yeah. That's infuriating. And when I say act suspiciously, it's the... It's the, the Hey, do you know anything about this? I don't know anything about this. I never, I don't, I never don't know anyone. I never, wasn't even here. I wasn't here. No, no. I wasn't here. Drink, 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 drink. I was never here. Get out. No, my kids. What, what, what? Oh, no, nothing. No, nothing. So, like, do you know anything about football? And she answers no five times, but gets more like, no. No, 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 no. No, like, no. no I don't follow sports. You'd be like, <laughs> if you were, you please, you may not have anything to arrest her, rest her, but you'd be like, come down to the station She's with not us. Comes, yeah. Let's have a chat in a room where we can record everything and yeah. put you under a little bit more pressure. Because clearly as well, you're going to snap. Yeah. You know something and you're going to tell us with a little bit of pressure. Yeah. That's what you should be doing. But yeah, they're terrible at their job. Terrible at their job. Um, and even with like, for example, as well, like McPeak, that, that made me laugh. They're like, hey, do you want to pre- do, do you want to press charges? He's like, no, I don't press charges. I just want you to lock her up. Uh, it's going to so you're gonna have to do something or another. Yeah. But they don't really care about it, to be honest. They just see an example of tr- mm. to potentially pin the murders on McPeak. Mm. I don't know how the fuck they think they can pin him on him. Mm-hmm. I don't know where the link is yeah. at all. Um, they seem to imply briefly that, oh, well, only a man, only a man could have had the strength to deal with those two football players, mm-hmm. ignoring the fact, well, you found, presumably they found the bodies Tight. as they were. Yeah. That is pretty much, this was sexy stuff. Yeah. That's Anyone can do that. Yeah. Anyone can do that. Um, we then got a lot of stuff... Uh, we then get a lot of stuff um, relating just back to the bar. We mm. get a... I ain't going to repeat the word, but a character we're supposed to like, who's a friend of Long John, one yeah. of the barmaids, a friend of Long John, and a friend of Molly. And at the end, it's even implied that she had a great relationship with them and stuff like that. Says three times, uses the derogatory term for a gay person in a role. Yeah. And it just makes you go, get the fuck out yeah. of here. It's, it's, she basically blames the murders on a gay people, yeah. but she doesn't use that word. I'm sure you can yeah. fill in the blanks yourself. Um, horrid little character. For, yeah. like, it just made no fucking sense yeah. why you were like that. I know it's 1976, but you knew that was a derogatory term even yeah. then. Um, Kathy, Kathy is basically convinced Molly is responsible for this, yeah. uh, particularly as it's her clothing that was involved. Um, and then we cut back to Alexander and Molly. 
They, they, he, they're back together. He was released by the police and he's shaving, which Molly just wakes up and is fascinated by. So much so that she ends up cutting his throat with the yeah. razor. This is the one of the more violent scenes as she slashes up his body. Um, it looks terrible. It's yeah. more just fake blood than anything else. But the camera does zoom in as like where, where she's covered in blood and she's Rub rubbing herself. her yeah. her body, her naked body with it. Um, we're kind of reaching the end point in the movie mm, now. Yeah. Uh, Long John wakes up in his bed to find Molly covered in bed with in, in bed with him, but covered in blood. Um, what's call it? He's like, what the fuck, basically. Yeah. But she says it's her own blood, and that she tried to cut herself, cut the tattoo off her body yeah. because she was going to take her two nephews swimming, yeah. and she didn't want them to see the tattoo because it's a bit obscene. Mm. Um, to be fair, they do this well enough mm. in the sense that she does go out of a way to hide her body as if the tattoo well, yeah. yeah has been scarred up and stuff like that admittedly L- long john could ha- have solved this by simply saying all right cool let me have a look yeah, yeah put, let me just address it or something or take it to hospital yeah the yeah. argument i guess is that i don't think he wanted to believe it was her mm. yeah and it's like he always gets to a point where, he, where i think he can put two and two together about what's gone on because there's a point where he's asking her about oh when did you first have sex and things like that and she's like oh i don't really like know when it all started and he's like he nearly gets there with yeah he starts picking away at yeah. it and so on I mean by the end she does sort of realise she does sort of um, we'll get into the end sequence now which mm. is basically uh, she admits um, the murder mm. of uh, McPeak to them including one's murders that we didn't even see yeah. and we should mention we get a couple of flashes near the end of her like on a boat mm. uh, a boat flowing at sea with like mutilated torsos and yeah. body parts I don't know what the fuck that's about but it's filmed in a completely different colour so it's kind of saying is it kind of hinting at it it's a complete fantasy rather than yeah it's a really real. sharp colour scheme mm. um, god what can I use as the best example bed knobs and broomsticks have you <laughs> yes! seen it have <laughs> you seen bed knobs and broomsticks the part where the bed is flying through the air it uses those vivid bright colours and yeah. fla- like that that's what it is yeah. uh, that kind of thing uh, yeah, that that's a very very confusing mm. thing to happen, and it only happens twice. Yeah, and near the end, more than anything else, um, she does admittedly finally kind of face the fact that her father was an abuser here. Mm. So that is something. But basically, uh, little John and um, Doris. Doris Peggy F- Fury, uh, not wanting her to get arrested, decide to drug her, mm. um, give her an overdose basically, yeah. pile her with pills and alcohol. And let her slip off into the night that way. This end sequence is it, it, too long. It's it's too long. It could have been effective because um, I think everyone here involved does it quite well. Yeah. Uh, but it's too fucking long. We get more flashbacks then, and we see what obviously happened to her father. He died uh, having a heart attack, abusing her, which obviously made her blame herself. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Then Tad and Tad and Tripoli arrive, proceed to stink up the scene with terrible dialogue, yeah. um, and that's it. She overdoses, she slips off, and the movie ends with the police arriving to arrest them. Obviously, you're going to find her dead, mm. and presumably then arrest little John and all yeah. of them instead. And it ends with Molly on a singular raft floating out to sea, which would, it could be an effective shot if the movie hadn't been complete nonsense throughout. Yeah. Um, it's very hard to piece this together. Uh, that's, I think, the best, uh, better than I expected to do, really. Mm. Um, just trying to get it together. Um, it's it's. I don't know if it's a good or bad movie. Mm. Like I I if they'd done it better, it would have been quite effective. But I didn't like the way it was just like obviously the abuse was thrown in there to make the oh she's gonna have minute when she's gonna be a psycho and killing men and stuff. I thought it was a little bit just kind of thrown together. And say so the fact it was called the witch. No. You were hoping for a witch and you didn't get a witch. Yeah, I'd rather have like cheese a proper cheesy supernatural rather than a dark kind of abuse. Well, that's what it ultimately is, isn't it? I think it could, if it handled and told it in a more coherent, sensible mm. way, the idea, the the idea of Molly and the abuse she suffered and what it made her and the idea she idolised men on TV mm. is a good story. Yeah. Uh, it could be well done, but I'm, I think, and maybe this is a, a very singular view, I think for that to really work, though, for me, you have to then be willing to go further with it and you have to be exploitive as fuck. Mm. I'm not saying you've got to go heavy on the abuse, got to go and heavy on what she then does yeah like it never felt like she was meting out punishment if that made sense yeah it meant more and more that, that she that it was just her mentally deranged mind and yeah. what she thought of these people had it been more of a i spit in your grave style thing yeah it might have worked better yeah like the men were horrible like the men were horrible well they were nice at first until it came to sex yeah 
Yeah, so then obviously that's why she... Yeah. That's that's kind of what I think maybe it would have been better. It would have been less original, because one thing I'll give this credit for is it's certainly some, a fairly original yeah. sort of story, way it's put together, yeah. the combination of several different things placed and story. It's just the problem we could come back to. It's incoherently told. Mm. Um, it's messy. It's cut terribly. I don't think it's well edited. Uh, the version, the version, the, even the restored version, isn't the prettiest to look at. Mm. Even if I will say it does have good cinematography. It loves wide angle shots. Yeah. It loves distant things and showing you a bit of scale. Yeah. Um, it also lo like even stuff like, okay, I'm going to film this where you get this combination of a man shaving in the mirror, but you also have the angle of her waking up in bed over there. Yeah. Do you know why the cinematography is so good? Cool. The man behind it would go on to do some great movies later on in his career, ah. including Escape from New York yep. and ah. The Thing. Okay, so that's what... So yeah. there is a talent yeah. in this movie. I do think there is talent, like I said. Mm. I don't necessarily know how much fault it is the actors and um, with the dialogue. Mm, it's because shit. it's shit. Mm. It's shit. Yeah. It's shitly written dialogue. Yeah. And it's like, I don't think anyone could really say things like, oh, it's seven o'clock. Uh, or I have to be at work at seven o'clock. This is the time I'm leaving. Yeah, or, or one of the other ones, um, Doris... So we've heard a lot about Daphne and her health conditions, which is why she gets so many pills. Yeah. Just nicks all the forms yeah. of pills. At one point, she's come over to talk to Molly and Long John. She doesn't say anything else. She's come over and says, oh, Daphne's got diarrhoea. I'm like, who? You don't lead with that as a conversation. You just go, oh, I was talking to Daphne the other day. No. It's like, not natural. Uh, it's yeah, not it's natural. not natural. I was like, who comes over and goes, oh, she's got diarrhoea. And I was like, what? That's, yeah, yeah, but I don't know how much of it is the fault of the, uh, the mm. actors. And the it's just bad dialogue. Yeah. But then, you know, surely they could have, like, riffed on it a little bit. Did they, mm. they were, unless they were dealing with a director who was like, no, no, you must speak this verbatim. Mm. Um, then we don't know that. Mm. Uh, it really, the worst ones, um, the worst acting comes from the boys, uh, Tad and Tripoli, which is Jean-Pierre Campus and Mark Livingston. Mark Livingston? I'm going to have to check that. That name rings a bell. It's not mm -hmm. hyperlinked, but... Anyway, mm -hmm. anyway, mm -hmm. they're the worst things in this. But they are youngsters. This yeah. is, could have been, very, before we know, this could have been their very first ever role on, t on screen. And you don't have loads of it, so it's passable. And given it's awkward, given, it, given that dialogue they're given is like... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Molly? Ugh. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's simply put, it's just... Uh, I don't think it's a like I don't think it's a terrible movie. I think it will bore you. And I mm -hmm. think that's its biggest crime. Yeah. Is that by the end, you'll just be like, oh, so boring. And that's what I'm going to take away from it. Yeah. It didn't excite. It didn't intrigue. I wasn't like, oh, this is going to be good and that's going to be There's good. No yeah. Even even the sexual content, it's like... No. no. There's no kind of prosthetics for anything that happens. No, yeah. no, not at all. A little squirt of blood here and there is not no. is not going to sate my gorehound, um, you know, taste, yeah. uh, desires. Um, but ultimately... It, it's certainly one of the more original of the nasties. Mm. You know, it's not following a formula of uh, zombies here or slashers mm. or, you know, abuse victim does this and stuff like that. Um, and it's got a deep and dark mm. tone throughout. Yeah. So I don't think it's like the worst one we've done, but it's way, way away from the being the best. Yeah. I think that's about it, really. I'm going to give it, I think, a score. Hold on. I'm one aware. Right, so, Blu-ray. Ah, You've got lots of extras here, though. This, So this is, you know, if you're a big fan of this movie, you get quite a bit. 2K restoration from original vault materials, which mm -hmm. is what we watched. A high-definition Blu-ray 1080p presentation. The original mo mono audio. English subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing. We could have done with that. Mm. Introduction to the film by Nightmare USA author Stephen Thrower. Archive audio commentary with producer-director Matt Clymer. Matt Kimber? Kimber, Matt Kimber, actress Millie Perkins and director of photography Dean Cundy. Ah, uh, that could have been quite good actually. Mm. Tides and Nightmares, brand new making of documentary featuring interviews with Kimber, Perkins, Cundy and actor John Goff. Uh, who was John Goff? Let me have a quick look. Oh, he played Molly's father. Uh. Okay. A Maiden's Voyage, archive featurette comprising of interviews with Kimber, Perkins and Cundy and Lost at Sea, director Kimber reflects on this notorious cult classic. Oh, and it also comes with a reversible sleeve Featuring original, original and newly commissioned artwork by the Twins of Evil. Which looks like that. Sorry. Okay. You don't like it because it implies yeah. witchy stuff again, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, you're really not happy about that. No, I just think it's really cheap. 
because it's saying like she's a witch. She's like, no, she's got serious mental health issues. She's been through so much tra like trauma, PTSD, and all sorts. Not a witch, no supernatural part. She's not cursing these men. I, yeah, I just find it a bit cheap. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, mm. final score then. Five out of ten. Five out of ten. Four for me. Four. Mm. Um, I cannot... For me, the biggest crime any horror movie can ever do is be boring. Mm. And this is too boring in places to warrant anything above four for me. I was even thinking... Halfway through it, I was thinking three. Mm. Uh, so the fact that it even got up to four mm. is something. Um... Like like us, if you want to do the nasties, that's, I think, the only reason to watch it. Yeah. I wouldn't go out of your way because I don't think it's anything special. No. There you go. Yeah. If you have seen it, though, let us know what your thoughts are in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. You can check us out on GBHBell.com as well as on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Tumblr. Go to Patreon to help us out over there. That's patreon.com forward slash GBHBL as well as Big Cartel where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts. And of course, if you like this video, do us a favor, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal, what else is life for?